evening order at 7 o'clock. Roll call. Ed Marcus. Robert Byers. Sean Harlan. Randy Sneed. Erica Parton. Derek Jones. Lisa Maloney. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First thing on our agenda tonight is nomination of officers. I would like to nominate Erica Parton president. I second. We have a motion and a second to nominate Erica Parton for president. We have any further comments? I would just ask that, uh, I guess I'd like to ask Erica if she took that position, if she can, with her job. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, Erica, looks like it's up to you from here. All right, then. <laughs> I think this is our first female president. Vice president. We have to get a vice president. All right, nominations for vice president. I'll nominate Ed Barkas. things guys uh, first is this media com I'm still waiting to hear back from them regarding this lease and again this is a six hundred and twenty five dollar per year lease so it's not probably front and center on anybody's radar but I'll probably reach out to them before the next meeting just to say hey where are we at um, another issue that we talked about at the last meeting was basically an agreement with Chuck DeWitt to continue on with his services for another 90 days um, and I'll be honest I just got to this this afternoon, it was even late this afternoon, I sent it to Ed and Lisa, not even the entirety of the council. Um, the agreement's basically the same terms that we've always been operating with with, with Mr. DeWitt. Um, the way I set it up was based on the first agreement. I think I maybe have the, the pay scale incorrect. Um, so in a document that I had, it was based on $3,000 per quarter. It's only a 90-day term, okay, so it's kind of a Kind of a feeler or temporary term, um, but it does say three thousand. I looked at the addendum and I realize now that we're basically we were operating on a, a per quarter basis of two thousand seven hundred and fifty. I've also set it up to be a monthly payment, uh, which would amount to nine sixteen and sixty seven cents uh, per month to be paid by the town. 
And if you remember at the last meeting, I think Ed uh, has been talking to Chuck, but wants to get this kind of off the ground, wants to get this moving uh, January 6th would be the start date. The end date would be April 6th, so again, that's your 90 days. But all of the other terms are the same as what we've had in the past for Chuck. Um, and, and I appreciate that if you're, as a council, saying I'd rather take a look at this and uh, review it before we do anything more with it. I appreciate that, and I understand it is a late, late minute, last minute kind of deal. But I just wanted to get it off my plate and give it to you guys so it's there for your consideration. Um, I think Ed maybe had a chance to glance it over and look at it. There's a typo that I need to fix as well. Um, my thought is if the council is so willing to um, approve the agreement with the modifications that to pay at $27.50 per quarter or $9.16.67 per month and fix my typo. I did look at it. It's it's basic. It is the same contract, other than the the expiration dates and changing the, the pay. For what I remember, when check was a thousand, I guess I, I forgot that it had went to eleven. Lisa caught that, <coughs> but yes, that's the <coughs> or excuse me, eleven thousand a year. But I was thinking a thousand a month. But other than that, I mean, it, it, it's the same contract. We've got ninety days, and I mean, at the end of that, then we can either change some terms in it, and if he agrees to it, then. Fine. If not, then we can. And in fact, either party, either either the town or Chuck, can terminate the contract with 30 days written notice. So if things really go south, you're really not liking where things are at. Um, it's a short contract to begin with, but you can terminate that with 30 days written notice. Yes, I have, I have a question for Ed. If you don't mind. Sure. Ed, do you, you know, at the last meeting, we we had discussed all those things um, in our exec session with Chuck. Um, I'm not going to bring them out on the table publicly right now, right. but I know you're aware of everything and all of our concerns and kind of the direction we wanted to go. Do you feel we can still do that under the terms of this contract? Yes, yes. And I think with that, those, because there was quite a different direction. There, there was, you are correct. And I, I think we're, we're in a good position because, first of all, I mean, nothing that we've really asked him to do was outside <clears> of what <throat> that contract said anyway. So, I mean, I think this, this gives us some accountability within that first 90 days. And that gives us, you know, either do it or we go on after the 90 days. So I think that was the whole, that was my intent of moving it to a 90-day contract rather than extending it, you know, for the whole year and then doing the 30-day termination. I thought the 90 days would give him a, an effort, or excuse me, an opportunity to show a good, good faith effort that he's going to do that. And I, I think we're in, we would be in good shape with that. And I mean, again, like Derek said, if we get into this 45 days, 60 days, or, you know, less than 60 days and find out that it's not working, then we can say, hey, you know what? We're, you know, we're not going to okay. extend it. And well, that, that's really my only concern, really, is because is, uh, I think we all kind of came to the agreement. We kind of want a different yes. direction with that whole yes. apparatus. And, um, and I think that's just to want to make sure that we can move towards that direction and still be within the confines of this contract. And I believe so. And actually, after after the meeting, I did have an opportunity to talk to him. I think he's got a better understanding of what the entire council wants. Um, and that's kind of what I, I was hoping to get out of that, was that we all were able to have that input as to what we expected from him. Not just me telling him, you know, sure. it was just, and not just my my feelings or my interpretation, it was just the whole council. So I think, I think we're in a good position for the first 90 days. Thank you, Ed. Mm -hmm. With that, I'll make the motion then to approve the contract pending corrections that have been stated in this meeting. Um, I'll second that. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I'm trying to think, do we want to have somebody sign on it or what? I mean, it's set up for the signature of the basically the, the council president, but I'm clear about the, there's two modifications here. One to change the pay rate, and the other one is to fix a typo that I did. Sure. The rush job himself. Sure. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, in favor, sorry. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. The other thing that I have to talk to you guys about is that the last meeting. Uh, Mr. Boroff came and talked about the ordinance violation ticket and we talked about the fact that there were photographs um, and he had filed some kind of a, I'll call it an answer and I think that's how the court's going to look at this too. Um, 
But just to recap, we filed our complaint October 6th of this year. He filed a response, and I made copies of most all this stuff for you guys, so should be five. Take a copy and you can pass it on down. Now I'm gonna, if it's okay, I'm gonna keep talking um, as we're, we're passing things down. This was all based on a ticket that was written back on July 19th of 2022. We're well within, within a, a statute of limitations. I think 48-1 at that point in time would have been Corey Bowman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. yes. And so, again, here's a copy of the actual ticket that was written. <coughs> I'll give that to you as well, and it basically talks about uh, animal, animal waste cleanup slash annoying public. I have not talked to uh, Corey Bowman to ask I, him. I did. Okay, so you can maybe expand. I on have that. already extended to the council my findings from talking to Corey Great. via email, so everybody is aware of what took place at when the ticket was written. Okay, everybody so I don't here. know the particulars of the when, where, and how the ticket got delivered to him, whether it was mailed, tacked on his door, I don't know. Um, the last thing that I had to give to you folks was the photograph that was given to me at the time when I was given the ticket and said to pursue this. And again, it, it clearly shows what I believe to be Mr. Boroff, and there's obviously a dog and it's uh, defecating on the sidewalk. I don't know exactly the location here, um, but again, there is that photograph. So there it looks like that. The ordinance violation that we're proceeding on is, is 90.028, where it does clearly indicate that a, a owner or an agent taking care of an animal um, has the obligation uh, to basically remove any excrement deposited by the animal on any public or private property. Is there any DNA technology? <laughs> <laughs> the original picture is much clearer than that. I, and Most I, of this I, is I, altered. This is doctored. No, I'm just saying <coughs> it is. What I, find, what I find interesting about the photo, clear. just an, an observation of the photo, is that he has a plastic bag and he's picking up other items, but doesn't pick up his... We picked so up and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. But I mean, you, you can't carry a little bag to pick up your dog. I see plenty of people doing that. <clears throat> and, and so people, people do do that, yes. <laughs> so that's the information I think that you guys wanted to take a look at, and maybe Sean has a little bit more to expand on that. But All I'm going to say is that the ticket was delivered to his wife, her Corey. Mm -hmm. I, in my opinion, I mean, if we're discussing it, if this is the time to discuss it, in my opinion, I think we just let it ride itself, ride itself out. I mean, I think it's a very clear, clear violation. I mean, it's not, he was delivered a copy of the ticket, whether it be to his wife, and he keeps reference in his response. I'm sure that he didn't write that. It says we, we, we. So I'm assuming that. She would be the we, um, so I, I have no, I have no desire to to take any action on it by this board. In other words, you mean just to move it? Just let it continue as it's process. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, I, I agree. I agree 100 percent with Ed, and that's rare. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but it is. <laughs> no, it's not. No. I, yeah. I think it'd be good, guys. Yeah, to just put a, a voice vote on this, and that way. I'll have that back. I move to allow it to proceed through the court as it's going now. So I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, that's what we'll do. Um, that was even more report. Thanks, Chair. Make a motion to accept the report. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Twenty twenty four meeting schedule. We would keep them the same. Lisa had brought up that um, because it, it does create a problem, she would like to change the meetings to the second, I, fourth. It's not my decision. Well, but, I didn't um, say it was your decision. I just said yeah, you brought yeah, it up. For accounting reasons. For so, accounting reasons. And sometimes the first of the month falls on the, the Wednesday. So 
I just feel we, we would be better off if we do it on the second and the fourth. My only thing is, are there any other meetings on those yeah. yeah. Wednesdays? There are no other meetings on those Wednesdays. Um, the only thing that I, I am bringing that up for is we've always kind of had a policy where, and we do have a resolution that the clerk is free to pay bills so that they are not late. We can't, I can do that. But we have had um, some questions about bills that, and then they yeah. were sent out. And so um, if you don't want that to happen, my suggestion is to move those dates because every time you, you want a meeting on the first of the month, a lot of times that first or second or third is that first Wednesday. And it's very hard to get the packets to you 48 hours in advance, close out the last month, bring up the first bills for the first, you know, the first of that month, and have them to you 48 hours prior to the meeting. That's the only reason that. I moved to make the meeting schedule for town council the second and the last week of the month at 7 o'clock on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. uh, Help you hear the. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are five Wednesdays in a month that happens right. four times a year. Yeah. Second, second, second and fourth. fourth. Second and fourth. <laughs> no, they amend that to say second and fourth. Okay, second and fourth. That's rare. That's rare. Mm -hmm. I don't even be thinking about that. Probably no one's going to be odd. Okay, well, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, there's that. three months, I think. Three, and three, at three seven? Months. Seven. Seven still? Mm -hmm. And <coughs> the second meeting, do you still want a workshop at six? in case you need one sure. like or yeah. do you want me to put a workshop on every meeting like publish it well we can't because of the police commission but um do you want the do you want to set the workshop that is currently set for the second meeting of the month an hour before the meeting in case you need one otherwise we have to publish it every time so then we could amend yeah. it if we need it we right. can always you can cancel it or e easier than you can post one. Right. So I'm asking if that's what you want. I would be fine with that. Sean, do you want to add that to your? Yeah, I'll uh, <laughs> add to my motion. <laughs> one hour before the fourth Wednesday of every month, we could have a possible workshop. What about a meteor? I did. Thank you. Two thoughts, guys, just before we move on and not to interject this whole thing's not a whole lot to um I think you would need to decide then are we gonna have a meeting seven days from now or are we gonna skip for the fourth of this month? The other issue is that I know that we have to publish basically a notice um, that talks about our regular meeting schedules and just would remind you to do that mm -hmm. so okay. that it's very clear for the public. As to will, it, be first. will it screw up current town business if we skip to the last meeting? To the 24th? Okay. What about make it effective February 1st? Yeah. There you go. Or make it effective February 1st. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sean, you want to <laughs> 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 that already passed. All right, so February 1st. I'll make a motion to make the town council's next meeting February 1st, 2024. No. Nope. No. No. The new schedule will take effect. The new schedule will take change in February. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> make a motion that our new town council meeting schedule will take place. Take effect. Take effect. February, February 4th. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? My lord. So, sorry. so moved. <laughs> Good job, Sean. <laughs> All right. That should have been one done. <laughs> Appointment of utility clerk. Make a motion to appoint Lisa Mullaney as utility clerk. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Welcome to the meeting too. Thanks. <laughs> All right. The appointment of development director. I move to appoint Mark Vanderwood. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Territory Board. Make a motion to appoint Ed. I'll second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Uh, Department liaison to the police. I'd be willing to. I've been doing that for 14 years. I've been willing to keep doing it. Those are your. Oh, those are mine. Okay. Sean, please. Park board. Bob, welcome to the club. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> uh, utilities. I'll take utilities. Redevelopment. Randy. Never done it, but I uh, can give it a try, I guess. I I've never done, done, I've never done the park before. <laughs> and planning and development. So that would be Chuck and Mark's liaison. Oh, okay. So I just figured yeah. if you kept them both the same, then because they kind right. of work yeah. together. Yeah. But Absolutely. if you want to separate them, you can too. Nope. Should Works I have both of them? Then? No, you have redevelopment. Okay. Do you want me to take the one with Chuck? Just, I mean, he's been doing it, haven't you? Yeah, that way we have a, a second backup. So are you going to oversee the development as well with Mark? Oh, I guess. I, yeah. Or are we separating? <coughs> it it make, makes no difference to me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to push too much. Yeah, it makes no difference to me. We can start out that way. So okay. Get some of that, I'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> if I'm working too We're hard. We're it. <laughs> That's Res bad. Resolution 2023-01 Power Tractor. Is that supposed to be 2401? Oh, yes. Sorry. Sorry. I know the resolution itself says 20. Yeah. I got most of them. My favorite. Make a motion to accept. Oh, no. Resolution 2024-01 Power Tracker. Second. I have some questions about it. Yes. What is it? The power. It's a fuel cost adjustment that IMPA, who is our wholesale power provider, when when their rates go up, they pass along to us. This keeps it even for us. For us as <clears throat> to buying that power, we pass along to the customer. I was say not to cut you off, but do we have any idea? I mean, your average customer, what it's going to affect them? I, I don't, it's it's two point seven percent. I think is what they were going up this year. So whatever that amounts to. Okay. Where's that at in here? Power track it's on the very bottom. No, I. The two point seven percent. It's got the number in there. I don't think it says the it, that that oh, number's that, not in there. Yeah, that's that is, the, the power track. Oh. So the. the, the yeah. The number is at the back. Zero of point it. zero. Yeah, zero one point three. zero one <coughs> seven. Yeah, it's not on the resolution in your packet, though. It's not. Should be on it's the, on the appendix page. A. Oh gosh, I'm just seeing it in red. <laughs> well, the, it's not negative. Positive. <laughs> Sometimes it is negative. It has gone down. It went down a lot over the past three years, and now it's coming back up. I completely missed it. I apologize. It's here. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Other new business? I have a couple items. I got a phone call this evening from Mr. Keith Ellis, lives at the corner of Indiana and Clinton. He got a letter regarding a ordinance ticket he I received. Took care of it. Sorry. The May of 2021 ticket. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I will let him know it's resolved. Thank you, ma'am. Um, I think that was it. I'll tell you a couple things. 
Yeah. Well, no, the, no, the, the couple. Sorry, I have something to do business if you don't mind. Yes, sir. I uh, I would like to see or have a discussion with the council later, maybe even with Derek. I think that for these purposes of reviewing these tickets and doing that, I think they should go before some kind of a council appointees, but I don't know how to set that up legally right. per se, but I think that you know we're dealing with tickets that can be you know potentially a couple years old just because of the way we handle them or violations and things. I just think it'd be better if we reviewed those with the person in a setting set for that purpose instead of in front of a you know a public forum like this for that type of thing. We, Chief Rudd, Mark Vanderweel, and I are trying to work on a flowchart, basically. New flow chart. <laughs> you know, a, a new policy on how these tickets are handled in the future. Yeah. We, um, we've been discussing it. I mean, so, it should be similar to like the, you have the utility review board or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Some kind exactly. of a review board yes. with people, you know. A member from the council, a member from, you know. Yeah. And that'll be the end. Some of this will be taken care of by after 14 days or whatever we come up with. If they're not paid, we're going to send a letter and not wait a year and a half to, yeah. to start that process. Well, I still think for purposes of so, but at the end protecting of the ourselves, I think we still should maybe probably work on setting something like that up. <laughs> yeah, I think before it comes before the whole council and they come in here, they, there should be some process before it gets here. Is there is yeah. like a public not necessarily. Um, I, I'm happy to sit down on a workshop with you guys and kind of explain what I think. Chief Red could probably talk to you about it more in depth at the workshop, but I, I think, you know, a lot of these tickets are ignored. And I, I hate to hazard a guess, but my guess is there's several hundred that are probably outstanding yeah. um, that have never been paid, and some of those are probably past the statute of limitations and they've just gone by the wayside. Um, I do get a handful of them from time to time, move those forward, but I, I think it's fine if you want to set up some kind of a process, and I think that is even more helpful if we ever get in front of the court, like we're going to with Mr. Bora, to say that we've provided every opportunity to be given a ticket, reached out to have some kind of a, a board, or whatever you want to call it, meeting or session, however that turns out. Um, I, but I'm willing to sit in on that if that's a workshop agenda at some point. I'm, I'm I'd like to ask the council. Maybe that should be one of our one of our first things. Maybe we should try to tackle here mm -hmm. the first part of this year. Here is I, I think we need to put something. I think this help these guys put their flow together. I, I think that's just a missing piece of that whole part yes. of dealing with that. Not I just mean, that, but the code enforcement in general. We need to have a workshop on and go over a lot of. I know there was some stuff that we talked about with codes that didn't really make sense and you know obviously we need like some type of hearing set up for people to object to their tickets um, who does what and when definitely one of the first workshops we need can we do it on the 17th or 6th that's fine if that's fine with the rest of the council I, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying we need to that would be our you know, where we can do that I, I just I, I want to see I've had two phone calls since I took over Monday uh, well I'm done to see assumed uh, off and both of them, and I'm not blaming any one individual, one ticket was from May of 21, and one, one ticket was from June of 22. I mean, we're dealing with tickets that are over 18 months old. Okay, so before you get all mad about that, I just want to kind of explain what happened. Okay, before we had no recourse to go after these people. You know, we can send them letters. <coughs> Derek doesn't want to take 500 tickets to court. No, okay? I get that. So, and, and I don't want so, to see our citizens taken to court. So anyway, so what um, what we have done in the past is chosen, not, not chosen, but randomly chosen three or four tickets a year that goes to court so that uh, we can pursue them. Okay? About two years ago, we came up with the TREX program, which is a wonderful program that the state of Indiana has in given us as a tool to collect money for anything that is owed to the municipality, okay? So the TREX program basically takes and they say, we have, we have been informed 
um, that you owe the town of Argus a hundred dollars. We are going in on your state tax return. We are going to take your tax return and give it to the town of Argus because we diligently did our duty and we know that you owe this money and you've never paid it. We have been informed that we can go back on any debt that is owed to the town back to whenever. So in the last year, we went through all of our, actually Lori, um, she's been doing, first she started with the utilities and she probably brought in $15,000 worth of old utility bills that, you know, people owed to us. And then she started on um, any other money that was owed to the town for various things, pool fills, you know, things like that. Then she started on the tickets, which were about yay thick. Now, in her opinion, she said, I think that we should send out a letter and let these people try to pay it before we just take their tax returns. I think that's fair. Okay, so that's where the letters came from. So we're not just randomly picking people and going, hey, we don't like this guy. We're going to send well, him I, a letter. You know I, know I, mean? so, I know that. I know that. Just... So I'm just saying, this is money that has been owed the town for years. These people ignored these tickets when they got them. And then all of a sudden they want to whine because now they've gotten a letter to pay them. So I'm just saying that we now have this tool and we are going to use it. So and that I, we can collect on stuff that we are owed. I appreciate that clarity, and I just, I think, uh, you know, if you're if you're given a ticket and and you owe the debt, you should pay it. But I think that the town needs to, in the future, somehow act faster because we're dealing the the one ticket that now has been resolved. But the one ticket I brought up tonight was almost thirty six months old. And I understand that, but we didn't get tracks until like two years ago. And we started again with the higher of the, we started right. with the utility bills. We wanted to see how it would work, you know, and we collected a lot of money off of that. And now, then we went to other things that, you know, companies that owed us money for water fills, you know, um, stuff like that. We went to other debt. Then... Now we have gone to the ordinance violations and we're trying to clean them up. Once we get them cleaned up, we will get a process. We've been discussing it. Perfect. We will get a process to where, you know, it will be dealt with at the time. But these people still have the mentality of this is just an ordinance ticket from the town of Argus and we don't have to pay it. And they need to at least, so, when they get it, they need to either pay it or address the it. The ticket that you were talking about, that man was fully aware of that ticket from day one. So he is now complaining because now we're asking him for the money and now he's complaining. But I took care of it. It's the done deal and we'll move on. But I we can have this workshop at 6 p.m. then on the yeah. 17th. So, yeah. But I just don't want Very people good. to think that we are targeting citizens because we are not. These were legitimate tickets that were written at the time. And instead of taking everybody to court and charging them three or four hundred dollars, we're giving them the opportunity to pay the fine that was due. Fair enough. So, but they don't even want to do that. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Any other new business? No. All right. Authorization of payment of budgeted donations. So these are the American Legion. We discussed these during budget times. Um, the Humane Society, and the Council on Aging, and the festival. These were all done at budget. I'm just asking permission to pay them. I know Sean really likes them to come in and give reports. Oh, I mean, if they just write, if they will just write us one, I'd be happy with that. Okay. If they just write us one, email it to you first to review. I'm okay with passing it tonight. Okay. Pending those. Okay. Things. That's a motion. And as soon as we receive those, we can send it. Yeah. Okay. But I want to receive those reports first. I, I think that's second. The best thing to do in interest of tax dollars. 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Abstain. So moved. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't here. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> oh. Well, yeah, but I didn't have seen it. Council on aging. Did you mean to say the legion for flags? No, I think probably the legion. I'm going to have money to be a bee bending. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> All right. Claims. Uh, and I don't have enough left. Okay. Forget. Forget. So you, you have probably the lowest amount of claims that I could possibly give you. We have exactly three claims on this docket because, again, the first was Monday. <laughs> so I'm just going to read the claims and then I'll give you the total. Um, we have PERF, which uh, did not get entered on the last docket. Um, it was paid, though. And so we have that claim in the amount of $8,571.51. Culligan Water, um, the police department got a reverse osmosis and a water softener, I believe. And so we paid it out of last year's budget. So it was uh, $3,878 total. Um, and then Miracle Recreation, the park board did vote to uh, pay $40,000 of that. So, um, and it's a $50,000 bill. Um, they're getting $10,000 from uh, Marshall, County Community, Marshall Foundation. County Community Foundation as a grant. So that's where that $40,000 came from. So your claims from 1220 to 12, 1220-23 to 1231-23 Total $52,449.51. Mm. Yeah. You should be very motion. happy with that. I make a motion to approve claims for December 20th, 23, December 31st of 23, in the amount of $52,449.51. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 